All right, so I wanted to take a couple of minutes and show some of the stuff we're going to be doing here today. But this is a, our second office, a lake that we built now six years ago. A six acre pond. Um, used a lot of natural things, used a lot of stumps that we rolled up. Uh, we took the dirt from the food plot over here, brought the dirt in and built this dam. So we had a lot of stumps. So we rolled the stumps by a lot of spawning areas, used a lot of conifer trees. You can see some pine trees are growing back now around the shore. Uh, felt like we had really good habitat. Um, the bluegill numbers, we do an electric fishing survey, the bluegill numbers were there um, up until a couple of years ago. And I've been pretty slack about adding in some of the other habitat. Um, we sell some awesome fish habitat. We sell mossback habitats and honey hole grass. Um, and there's another uh, possible product coming online. Love those things. They're easy to install. They work great, uh, both for protecting bluegill with some dense habitat and for fishing around. But what I want to talk about today a little bit is just if you've got some, if your lake needs cover, most lakes do, if your goal is growing bass, you've got to protect small bluegills, one of the key things. You want to have places for the bass to loaf and hang out, and you want to um, be able to catch those fish. So we'll, we'll start down here real quick. This, we just brought some stuff in last night. A lot of this was made yesterday. We sunk some things yesterday. Hopefully we'll overlay a video of a couple of boats that we sunk that were sitting around that weren't useful anymore. If you've got trailers and boats, you probably are like us. You've got tires and wheels that aren't being used or aren't good anymore so we brought those down yesterday we're going to add some of this habitat well, let's show you some of the stuff that we've got here this is a an older mossback habitat sat around it cracked so i can't sell it to a client but it can go in our lakes right here these things um i used to use these years ago they actually work really well they're chicken chicken uh hatch boxes i think that's what they call them um and so we just wrapped up we had a little fire <laughs> so again the point here is to use junk that's sitting around taking up space we need inventory space for our products and get rid of it so we brought up the trailer brought this down so we put together some of that we're going to last that and hold that down here's a lot more of these uh crates what we've done here is really created a lot of hiding places the purpose of this right here is to protect smaller bluegill we can go from this size to this side it's a game changer so we took those we had some older mossback limbs that weren't working right uh making great limbs now everything's wonderful but we put them to use so we're putting those inside some of these plastic pallets here we stack these up uh and use some irrigation tubing around there we sunk one thing yesterday called an eagle's nest. So we have a picture of that with just a bunch of irrigation tubing. You know, getting creative, creating uh, different designs. We're gonna use all of this to learn from as well. I didn't mention that. So all the stuff that we put out, we are gonna GPS or market with some conduit and know what's there and then say, hey, what's working? What's holding uh, fish uh, better than something else? I mean, this. Here's a good example here. So this this may hold fish, more like a steak bed. Uh, they used to make a lot of these back in the day. And here's some, again, moss packs that we've collected over the last four or five years. You know, a lot denser it seems like, but we'll see. What seems to be holding fish better? Uh, got pretty creative over here. Uh, I think Dan said this was called the Catfish Hotel, so they can get up inside some of these little holes. Just junk we had laying around, we think it's going to work pretty well. Um, yeah, we do have this. So we've got this one screwed together and zip tied together. This is going to be a type of cross with a bunch of irrigation tubing. Uh, again, we had this sitting around. Why not use it? I mean, this is just a ton of surface area for all kinds of fish getting in and out and around. I'll be really curious to see if this is bluegill or more like bass hanging on the edges. Uh, let's we'll show this right here. So this is just a bunch of limbs, which you could do with PVC pipe or something like that too. But these are all screwed together. Just some basic screws, and this every one of these has got several screws in them and all kinds of funky angles, so fish can get up in there. And then some more uh, crates put together over there where we get the zip tie. So we're going to sink all this down, look into it, and see. But again, the point is, we love artificial habitat. It makes it it's easy to assemble, it's easy to put in, but if you have something laying around, something is better than nothing. 
Uh, this may look ugly, it is. It's gonna be below the water. Believe me, I had to get a pass by my wife. She said, you better make sure this cannot be seen. It will not be seen, I promise. But, you know, take some of your junk, put it in the lake in a strategic manner, put it close to spawning beds if you can. You'll have some, uh, some better fishing, let's hope. Thanks for watching the video.